Hey, it's your girl, Nicole, and you're listening to the Risers Hub Podcast. Welcome back to the third installment of the Risers Hub Podcast. I am so happy to be back. And as always, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen to this voice. (laughs) So today I want to talk about change and how it can impact you mentally, physically, and emotionally. To help me with this subject, I would like to introduce you to my very first (laughs) Risers Hub ambassador and very good friend, Caroline Ouya. Caroline is the program manager at Futures Without Violence. She's a mental health and public health advocate, an inspiring counseling psychologist. And she's also a runner, marathoner, and a very free-spirited young woman. I'm so happy she agreed to join me on this podcast today to talk about change and the effect it has on many of us, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Welcome, Miss Caroline. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing very good. And I want to thank you, first of all, for being my first ambassador. We've had some extensive conversations about this and extensive conversations about change in general. So I just felt like it was very important for me to have you as the first guest of the new season because our conversation, when I leave our conversations, you get me thinking, you get me going. And you get me excited about things I forget that I get excited about. Yeah. And I think that everyone needs a Caroline in their life. <laughs> because you lived life, and today we're going to be talking about change. You go through all these changes, and, and while you're going through all these changes, you tend to forget who you are sometimes. And when you have someone who knows you or understands where you're coming from, and like myself, has gone through change, we're actually going through it together. We just remind ourselves like who we are, yeah, where we came from, and then what we can do. So welcome Caroline again and thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm excited to be back on the podcast. I'm excited to talk to you about the change, the way that we've been talking about it over these yes. past few months. And I'm excited to be an ambassador. I really believe in what you're doing. I think that we're in a space right now where People are really in need of tangible tips and tricks and spaces to talk about what they're struggling with and to figure out how to get some help. If that's what we can do together on this platform, then let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. (laughs) So the main reason why we want to have this is because me and Caroline, we both moved cross country in the past year. She's been now on the East Coast for six months. I've been on the East Coast now for almost a year and a half. And, but the changes that we're going through are still very similar. And the feelings that we feel are, they're, it's uncanny. And um, we see each other on social media and either we see our faces <laughs> or we see what we typed or what we, or we see what we shared. And we're like, oh, I got to call her and make sure she's all right. So So we're going to share a little bit about really change. And my first question to you, Caroline, is before you moved here and before you made that decision to move to the East Coast, what was your idea of change compared to what it is now? That's a great question. I think, one, I'll say that I thought I knew everything that needed to be known about change, right? For example... I was born in Kenya and I moved from Kenya to Atlanta, right? And that's change, like cross country, different cultures. Then I moved from Atlanta and went to boarding school in Connecticut and it was change, right? In high school, like, okay, change. Then came to California, right? And that's a whole different. So I've been so used, the point of all of this is to just say, I've been so used to picking up from one space and going to another. And so I thought that when it came to just the next change, the next picking up and going for the sake of opportunity or whatever it may be, that I would be ready because I've done it so many different times, right? Girl, that was not the case, okay? (laughs) For whatever reason, navigating this particular change was so much harder than I remembered any of the others. And I don't know if it's because I'm older and I'm seeing it from a different perspective, Um, But I thought before coming that 
I would arrive to one, I thought it would be easier. It was not easier. I thought that I like all I have to do is check off one, two, three, four, and I'll get there and it'll be easier. That wasn't the case. Um, and then two, I had this vision of what my transition these past six months would be, right? And it has been nothing like that. Nothing like it. Like no part of me prepared for it. I'm now sitting in this space where I am having to develop a new relationship with change because I'm experiencing a new version of it. You know what I mean? Does that resonate with you at all? That does res resonate with me because I know when I moved here, I had an entire idea of what it would be like. And you have to be very careful what you put in the universe or what you ask God for, because I remember saying, I want this change to be something where I'm experiencing something completely different. And I wasn't specific on how I wanted it to be different. Mm. So when I got different, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't curse that much, but different kicked me in my ass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. And, it was jarring because I'm a type of person where I'm, I feel like I'm well put together and I can move in a way where I can navigate and maneuver myself in different situations, different scenarios with ease. I'm a people's person, at least I, at least I like to believe that I am. And it's been very hard. Now, having said that, the people that I have encountered for the most part, I would say 90% of them have been absolutely fantastic and extremely nice and very welcoming. But at the same time, there's a loneliness to it because I am the person going through change and I can see it and everybody else can see it. It's almost like standing in a room naked and mm. everyone can see you and there's nothing you can do about it. And mm. so change for me was very different. I'm very used to change as well. Um, coming from, I'm not from a different country, but coming from um, a different state. I'm originally from Missouri. I moved to California and then from California. At the time I was married, so we moved, it seemed like every three or four years because we wanted to try a different area, a different environment. And then the children came and that was different. And then the jobs would come and go, and then that was different. So, yeah, change has been very interesting. And I am learning to, that I'm going to have to, and I think we talked about this the other day, reconstruct my idea of my skill sets in order to put myself out there more in a more intentional way. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I think that does make sense. And what I'm hearing from you, which I think is something that we can pull out for everyone and be a reminder is that one, change is an experience that we have had many times before this point. You know what I mean? I, I think even with the journey that I've just shared and the journey you've shared, you like, you gave like a million examples of like when you had to change into something different, right? And so it's just like reminding me again that this is a, we hear it all the time, it's a constant experience of life, right? So then if it's a constant experience and it's jarring and it's lonely and it's disorienting and it's confusing, what the heck do we do with that? And that's like something that I'm hearing where it's, you're in the space, and I can say that I'm in the space too, where it's almost like all the different parts of yourself are trying to align as one in this new space. And for me, when someone asks me like, how's this change going? Or like, how's everything going? The way that I've explained it to them is that I feel like I'm time traveling right now. And they'll look at me like, what do you mean? And I was like, I, there's a piece of me that's trying to remain in the present, right? Like I'm here, I'm in this new space, be present, take it all in. Then there's a piece of me that keeps going to the past, trying to figure out how the heck did I get here? What did I bring with me? All like, what did I pack up in the suitcase when I was on my way? And then there's the piece of you that keeps jumping to the future, right? And it's like asking that question, who do I want to be here? Who do I want to be in general, right? And who am I without 
those familiar places, right? Those familiar things that sometimes we attach to our identity. So then it becomes so exhausting. I don't know about you, but I find myself like some days I am so tired. And I'm like, why am I so tired? And it's because I'm time traveling. Like in one day, I don't spend time in 1991 when I was born. I don't spend time at that one time when I got that scholarship to go to college and study whatever. And then I'm also right here. Okay, you're a program manager. Let's figure it out. So it's just disorienting, if that makes any sense. It does make a lot of sense. And the one thing that I've learned through my journey is there's going to be some aspects of life that you're going to have to let go. Right. And I think that's part of the time traveling that you're feeling because time travel is, okay, like you said, this happened in 1991, and then this is happening in 19... I don't know, 97, and then it, something else happened in 2010, and it's, that was yesterday. Right. And we need to, like, let that go because that is the past. There's nothing we can do to change it. But we can start creating the change, like, right here in the moment and possibly in the future if we're moving with intention. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I do deeply understand that because I am not perfect. There are still things in my life where... I, I can't let go. And I fight with that every day. And you do, you, it starts with your mental, which mentally gets you exhausted. And then if you're, if you think about it, you know how you feel after you run a marathon, it feels like you've been running a marathon when you have these thoughts running through your mind over and over again. You're like, Ooh, I'm tired. Yeah, no, that is true. And I love that you're bringing out that it's like what's going, our mental health is making it or the way that we're processing the change in our brain is making it so that we're not wanting to let go. And that's very true. If we look at neuroscience and how they describe what's going on neurologically or in our bodies related to change, that makes sense because our general, like our bodies, like as humans, we want to remain in a routine. We want to remain in the habit. We want to remain in things that are familiar, right? And so as soon as we are removed from that, for whatever, whether it's tragically, whether it's we made the choice, even if we have made the choice, when we are removed from our routines and our habits and our common spaces, then it triggers serious uncertainty. Right. It triggers a threat response in our body. So we go into fight, flight, or freeze. Right. We have increased anxiety and fear because we're like, oh no, what happened? Are our resources still here? Are are we still safe? Is what our body is asking us. And then even in this moment with what's going on in our brain, we have the reduced ability to focus and think clearly as a result of that change. Um, which also during this period of time means that our performance is impaired and that we have increased emotion. So those are the things that are scientifically associated with how we as humans, many of us, respond to change. So if we know that, then what does that mean for the experience that we're having right now? For you and what you're going through and some of the things that you mentioned, what's standing out for you? Yeah, there's a couple of things standing out for me because I know that, for instance, like when I move from one place to another, that's just, that's like a small change because that's within the city. But you're so like worried about coulda, shoulda, woulda. Um, It's like not being in the present. And I remember when I had to like physically move and you were just like, you know what, Nicole, I know you're trying to do all this by yourself. Yeah. what's going on with you and but to move to get away from that part though when I was moving I'm so into I have to hurry up and do this I have to hurry up and do that and da, 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 da. And the day that I moved was like the hottest day of the summer mm-hmm. it's like you can pass out because you're trying to rush something that you don't have to rush you didn't ask for help so how are you going to do this and this is and I hope I'm articulating this the right way because when I decided I was going to move this particular day, I didn't have anybody and I didn't ask for help. And so what I did is the heat itself slowed me down. And so I took one box at a time 
And I slowly walked to the truck and I put a box in the truck and I slowly walked back, took a breath of fresh air in the air conditioning. And then I did it again for the next box. And it took me probably a whole heck of a lot longer than it would have if I was just rushing and trying to hurry up and like to almost pass out because I'm trying to beat the heat. But the reason why I'm sharing that scenario is because I've learned to slow down. Mm-hmm. And when things get heated, like the heat, you got to start slowing down and looking at the full picture. Right. Thinking about the resources that you do have and how are you going to move forward. And so like that day, the resources I had was me and a truck and some boxes. <laughs> right. Heat was slowing me down. So I just took my time and it took me probably... I don't know, 30 minutes longer than it would if I was just trying to hurry up and do this and do that. But I wanted the move to happen that day and I wanted to get a lot done. And I've I've gone back to praying, so I prayed over it and I got it done. So fast forward, I, I moved the stuff in the truck to my next location. And while I'm at the next location, some neighbors come out and they're like, we want to help you. The old Nicole would have said no. The one that didn't change, if I wouldn't have changed, would have said no, I got this. And I said, you know what? If you guys don't mind helping, please help me. And right. I took that truck and I took their truck and I moved everything out. So it's, I don't know, it's just a way of giving you an example of like when you do slow down, and you do think about taking care of yourself in the situation, other resources will come to you that you don't even expect to come. That's the change that I'm going through. That's, I, I, and I hope that answered your question. I went off into a tangent, but yeah, it's just slowing down and letting things, allowing things to slow you down so you can start thinking with intention. And right. Thinking with your head because mentally spiritually emotionally we talk me and you talk about this all the time it affects everything Mm -hmm. everything. and there are going to be some things that you're used to that you're going to have to give up in order to move forward you can always go back to those things you're going to have to slow it down a little bit and figure out what you need to sacrifice to get to the next yeah yeah i i think that's huge advice like i if we go back to what's happening to ourselves physically, right? And we are having a hard time focusing and thinking clearly, like we're having a hard time making decisions. Our emotions are all over the place. That's not the time to be trying to move real fast, if we're being honest, right? That's not the time to be like, I'm about to be a superhero. And the issue that I know I have, and I think that you just shared a little bit, is we create this big vision of we're going to move and we're going to be the black how we are and we're going to give it 150 percent and then you get there and you're struggling and you're like why and it's because this is what the experience of change is i think my my sort of takeaway for that personally that i'm learning right now is that because i i one having to convince myself and remind myself that change comes with all of these things that i've just mentioned which means that i absolutely have to slow down i absolutely have to be careful about making certain decisions around this time because i'm not fully i'm my my performance is impaired and my emotions are increased i need to ground um and i know that it's a season where i need to focus more on taking care building basic routines into my life again to remind my body and my mind that I'm safe. And I think a lot of times when we tackle change, we tackle it with this energy that our body does not have at the moment to give towards our change. And so then we end up causing more frustration and harm to ourselves than not. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And let me give you a quick example of how when you're going through something and how it affects your mental and your physical and how the mental health is so important. And when we're using the word mental health, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. We're just talking about the state of your mentality at that moment. Okay. And this is, I I love sports. Everyone knows I love sports. And I was watching 
probably the last dance or something with my Michael Jordan's the last dance. And the, he was, they were getting ready to play against Utah. He had eaten some pizza the night before and they don't know if it was poisoned or he just got sick. They have no idea. He goes into the game and he's not feeling well at all and he's playing horribly. And then they get to the point where they got to win this game. And he finds something mentally in himself to switch his mentality to, okay, I have to play this game and I have to play it well in order for us to get to the next level, whether it's the next game or to win the series or whatever it was. And so he finds this mentality that I have to win. He dug deep and he figured it out. And then he played one of the best games of his life. And of course, when he was done, passed out. And mm-hmm. so when I'm so when we're talking about your mental health and how change affects you, it, it does take a toll on your mentality and your mentality affects your physicality. It, it affects your spirituality and you need to work on paying attention to what's going on in your head so you can take care of everything else that's going on with you. And so when me and Caroline are talking about change and how it's affected us mentally, physically, and emotionally, there's just so much that goes into it. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and again, I, I hope that's making sense because this is all about wellness is everything. Your wellness journey is everything and everything affects it. What I wanted to ask you is, what is the biggest thing about change in the past six months? You're like, whoa. And how did it affect you? Mm -hmm. Mentally, physically, or spiritually? So a theme in my life that I am always working with and and learning about and strengthening is around self-trust, right? Like how how making sure that I trust myself and what gets in the way of trusting myself versus what supports my my trust and my belief in myself. And what I'm realizing is that this change and a lot of the different components that are involved in it, whether it's like my professional and career life, whether it's my social dating life, like all of these different parts of me that I'm like, change is coming. It's What's it's also causing me to really question my self trust. Like, do I trust myself to maneuver this new space? Do I trust myself to make decisions at this new job? Do I trust myself to take care of my new place? Right? Like, to all of these like little things that we carry inside of us that we feel insecure about. I'm seeing that has been just like unearthed in a way that I'm like, whoa, like I thought we had big, I thought that I had the conversation with myself around confidence and self-trust, but I'm seeing that it's really causing that space of my life to come up again in a way where I need to pay attention and give information to myself to either say, yes, absolutely. You are, you trust yourself or no, this is an area that you need to continue working on. And I think that is just a whoa to see that be such a big theme right now. Yes. So, yes, trusting yourself is is key to all of this. There was one thing that you said, though, when you were talking about self-trust and the way that change makes you feel. And vul- and I think it's a vulnerability that we feel. Oh, so is, vulnerable. Yeah. And the, me and Caroline are talking about moving across country, but like change can happen within anything, like within a job or a family or whatever. And I think that when something is happening and you don't know what to do with yourself, but you see it happening, you do have to trust yourself in knowing that you can do it. And that goes back to at the beginning of this podcast, when I basically said that you need a Caroline in your life, to remind you of who you are and what you can do. And so I think, Caroline, you shared a lot with me over the past year. And I'm always like so surprised that you do get scared or that you do get nervous or that you do get anxious. Because I'm like, I know that she can do A, B, and C. So what's she talking about? You know what I'm saying? And you're you're just like, I'm so glad that you can see me and I appreciate that. And so the self-trust is if you you forget how to 
trust yourself, mm-hmm. then you need Caroline or Nicole or Sally Sue or a Peter in your life to remind right. you that you can do this. Yeah. Because you start right. listening to what's going on in your head and you'll get so lost in that. that yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It goes back. Bell Hooks says it. Uh, you, we don't heal in isolation. We heal with community. So at the end of the day, even with change, like we're not supposed to navigate that alone. We're supposed to navigate it with community. Like at the end of the day, my best friends from hi- uh, high school were the ones who welcomed me when it was snowing with boxes of goodies to say, welcome to the city. And they, I got to there's all these people that along the way showed up to usher me through the change. And like you said, you got to look out for that. Those are little like hugs and winks from your support system and whatever your belief system may be to tell you that either you're going in the right direction or that you're going to be okay. And I think something that I want to speak out loud to you is I, I'm a mental health advocate, but I I do it in the context of public health. So for me, it's very important to look at what's going on in our community and what's going on in our world and how that then impacts our decision-making and experiences individually. And not only are we going through this change this past few years related to our move and that, there's so much change going on environmentally around us, right? Like we go through these changes every four years of an election cycle. We go through, we're going through climate changes that some people believe in and they don't believe it, where it's a hundred and something degrees outside. And when it's that hot, it impacts our body. Let's just be real. Like it physiologically impacts our body. It's known that people are more angry and agitated as a result of higher heat. So that's a change we're having to maneuver. Then we're maneuvering all the things that are going on social media, global pandemics and stuff. And so the thing that I think is making the change for me right now, even so much more just like overwhelming is that I'm doing it in the context of all of these really big experiences that are happening to us collectively. And as an advocate who cares about the well-being of me and my people and my community and the causes that I advocate for, that's a whole nother element that you're having to bring in. And so I just want to name that, that there's changes that we go through individually, and then there's changes that we're going through collectively that's impacting us individually. It's just hard to figure out what does it look like to maneuver change when it's so much at one time. I totally agree with that. And that goes back to when you're in the airplane, they tell you to take care of yourself before you take care of your child. And some people can't wrap their heads around that. And it's, you have to take care of yourself first so that that everything else around you falls into place. And because there's much change that goes on in each individual life, like you said, collectively and personally, if you start within and start with yourself and remind yourself that you're going to be authentically yourself and how can I hold on to that? I think, in my opinion, this is why I do what I do, the wellness coaching, the life coaching, is that when you start within, you can ask yourself, how am I going to participate in this change that's happening to me? How am I going to participate in this? How, am, how is this going to look to me? If you start there and you set, a, set, you set your boundaries, you, you set the rules that you, you want to follow, and you put things into place that's going to help you succeed, I think that's going to be the best way for you to deal with change and mm-hmm. deal with the collective change and the personal change. There's so many aspects of it that we can talk about, but I do like the fact that you shared how there is collective change, there's individual change, and how we can move forward dealing with those two changes because we deal with it every single day yeah yeah it definitely feeds off of each other i was talking to my friend i was and i was like have you asked yourself what you need today so as you're going through change i think that's probably the most consistent question to hold on to what do i need today and make it as specific as that and sometimes you say what i need today is to drink some water because i'm thirsty 
And then other days you're going to be like, I need to cry because I'm so pent up. But I think that when you're going through change that you need to manage your expectations. I love that. And I just want to add to that because I don't want to sound like I'm as perfect and I can deal with change because I am a human being and I cannot deal with change very well. I don't like it. I can't stand it. But I love the concept. Okay. (laughs) Change can affect you in so many different ways. And that's when you call your therapist or your friend or a family member and stuff. And you need those resources to help you get through stuff like that. And I'm here to tell you, I have no shame in picking up the phone and calling a family member or meeting a friend for coffee to say, hey, let's just get together. I need to see your face. I need a hug (laughs) just to get through it. And it's that emotional connection, that community that you were talking about. The community doesn't have to be huge. It could be one person that you feel that is safe enough to to share your life with. That's community. But you need someone. You do need your community to help you get through these different changes. You definitely do. And at the end of the day, it's change causes us to question our sense of safety and security. That is the common theme. And regardless of what kind of change it is, it forces us to question those two things. So then that means that you, we have to do extra work. We have to be, and not even extra, even just a little bit helps. We have to be very mindful to incorporate things into our life that will remind us that we are safe and secure. So then that's why the community is, yes, I'm secure. I'm with my people. That's why sleeping, okay, yes, I'm secure. I'm able to rest. That's why like eating, okay, I'm safe. I'm secure. I can feed myself. But then when we go through change, that's when you're deciding not to eat and you're deciding you're not drinking your water. You're not sleeping. Your body is literally, so you're going to take me to the other side of the country and you're not going to take care of me. Like you're going to just take me out here and try to get rid of me. That's what your body is feeling. And so it's so safety and security is the theme. What can I do to remind myself that I'm safe and secure? So for me, I have affirmations. Another way is I still am maintaining my running and physical activity because that is a consistent way that I, my body knows that I'm telling it it's safe. For me, I, and I can't believe I'm going to say this. But I had to do the opposite. I had to stop running. I had to stop working out because I was physically moving things. And this was part of the change that I'm talking about. So if you want to run next week, if you want to run with this group, if you want to be able to, you're going to have to stop at least for a couple of days and breathe and take care of this move first before you do anything else. And I'm telling you, my running schedule, everyone knows me. I basically run every day, if not every other day. I have not had consistent runs in probably a year. Mm -hmm. They come in spurts. And usually that would drive me crazy, but my body is, you're good. You're fine. Yeah. Go out right now and run four miles. Would it be fast? No, it wouldn't be fast, but I can run four miles. Yeah. I'm okay because my body remembers. There are some things you have to sacrifice in order to move forward. So I I like Everything that you said, especially as soon as you said sleep and eat, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know all about that. (laughs) Yeah. So I have a question for you. I'm going to put you on the spot. How does it feel to be the Risers Hub's first ambassador? And how do you see that moving forward? Because I'm excited. I don't know about you. (laughs) Yeah. I'm excited. I think this is something that we're about to figure out together and Building community takes time. It takes feedback back and forth. You know what I mean? But so I'm excited for that piece of it to figure out, okay, what could this ambassador role be? And how could we collaborate at, in the intersections that we both care about to really make sure that we're creating room for conversation and bringing people together around it? So I'm, I'm really excited. What do I see it being? Like one is... I believe in resources. I believe in tangible things that you can go and read or hold on to or fill out or, you know what I mean? And so that's kind of be the first kind of area of focus for me with all these different topics that we're throwing around. What are some very good resources that I can vet 
based on my expertise and provide it as a supplemental tool to everything that's going on at the Rise. I also see us hosting intimate conversations, you know what I mean? Like where we can dive a little bit deeper, whether it's in a Zoom room or whatever, I don't know, where we can just get real and everyone can share what's resonating with them around the different things that are being brought up throughout this season. So those are two of the things that I'm thinking about and that I can bring my care note lens to. Uh, but I'm just excited to see how this grows. And I'm constantly talking to, learning about, studying how our bodies and brains work. And it's very clear to me that we are struggling individually and collectively with our wellness. Surgeon General has said it's an epidemic of loneliness right now. Anxiety and depression is really high, especially around our youth. And there's just like a lot of fear when people are not quite sure how to take care of themselves. So with that understanding, I'm hoping that together through this ambassadorship, we can figure out what does it mean for us to contribute to those challenges. This is why she's going to be an ambassador. <laughs> I knew it well long before you did. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline, for your time. I totally appreciate it. And until next time, keep rising. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Remember, this podcast is meant for both education and entertainment purposes only. I am not a licensed therapist, so it's crucial to consult your physician, psychotherapist, or qualified health professionals for personalized advice. Until next time, take care. If you're enjoying this podcast, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share. That's what they told me to do at the end of this podcast. So could you hook me up? Thanks. Bye. <laughs>